Hello, hello. So glad to see you here. This episode of DC Home is going to run a bit short. Although I believe that when you see the finished product, you'll agree that uh, short may not be the most appropriate word. Now, there's a lot I could talk about this week. So many important events. Some we can take pride in, like the many protests for fundamental racial justice. And then there was everything else. It gets difficult to choose. I was originally going to talk about Alan Oswald Watts, and maybe he'll show up in the next episode. As for this week, I write a character on this show who is very near to my heart named Old Herbert. I like Old Herbert not because of the different attempts at bad voices that I do, which is not to be mistaken for bad attempts at different voices, but because Old Herbert possesses a quality that has become rare in American society. That quality is nuance. Nuance, which means a subtle difference in or shade of meaning, expression, or sound, has been twisted over the past 50 or so years, both here in America but also in other places throughout the world, to mean that everything is actually black and white. But anyone with eyes can see, well, not the dogs, you need cones to distinguish the color, nobody without cones can take part in this, but pretty much Anyone with eyes can see that the world is not made up of black and white, but of every color in the rainbow. That diversity in color is nuance. Uh, let me give you an example. Trump had a bunch of protesters tear-gassed so he could take a bad picture with the Bible. That's a fact. There's no arguing that. Someone skilled in politics and rhetoric might say that these were peaceful protesters, because by all accounts they were. Perhaps this person would also point out that the picture wasn't just bad, it was very bad. You see? Nuance. Now, since that event occurred on June 1st of 2020, Trump has actually denied that tear gas was used. That's not nuance. That's a lie that contradicts even the testimony of those who fired the tear gas. It's like if I said that Trump is so good at denial, probably because he lives in denial every day. Like that. Trump tried to claim that the shots fired into the protesters were not bullets, not even rubber bullets. But again, he was proved wrong. Trump isn't very good with nuance. Trump's idea of nuance is embodied in his claim that everything he says is, and I quote, highly confidential. Which would be a lot like me saying that everything he said is literal bullshit. Clearly, it isn't literal bullshit. Nobody would try to claim that every word out of Trump's mouth is literal bullshit. Not literal Sure, it looks and smells just like bullshit, even as it fills his mouth to the brim, even as we can see it piling up around him. Trump denying the harm those rubber bullets did would be like me saying that, uh, well, of course he had no idea how painful those bullets were because he was used to far worse from his dominatrix. I'm talking, of course, about Mike Pence. Behind that waxen facade, that stare of a dead man, beats the mighty heart of a powerful dom. And in his lederhosen, fitted for a much smaller boy, his favorite means of dispensing justice is with a slap. Just the smallest slap. The smallest slap from the biggest paddle, and he likes his big paddle. He likes to pull out his mighty penis, which he himself has flattened down until it bears a striking resemblance with a ping-pong paddle. 
He takes out that penis and he'll wave it into Trump's face at first, just to give him some idea of how long it's been since he last bathed. I could go on and on. My point is that nuance is what keeps us civil, keeps us working together. I'll give you an example. Trump saying that the protesters were never tear-gassed, as I mentioned, is an irrefutable lie. Trump thinks that's nuance, but it's dangerous. It's dangerous because in accepting it, we allow Trump to tell us what is real and what is not real. It would be like me saying that, um, <laughs> of course he didn't think the cloud was toxic because he has worked his lungs into such amazing condition. It's why he never gets sick. And the way he conditions his lungs is by inhaling very deeply, really hard. Don't just inhale, but really suck now. Really suck. Like the way Donald Trump gets down on both knees and just loves on the mighty penis of Vice President Mike Pence. And I'm telling you, he doesn't just like it. He loves it. He worships it. He worships that mighty cock until his face needs a whole other layer of base paint. And then Mike Pence unfurls that mighty cock, that hard, throbbing meat just inches from the face of Donald Trump, one side painted with the stars and stripes, the other painted in the colors of the Confederacy. He's been told it's coming back. And when that Mike Pence schlong gets this mighty, Donald Trump is forced to play a little game, just a little taunt. All he has to say is his complete name and walk away. Or he could finish the job. And so Donald Trump begins saying his name. And you know, Donald Trump comes from a very old family. And when you're in one of those old families, you often carry the names of several of your forebears. And this is what Trump had to do with that throbbing meat radiating nearly 99 degrees all over his face. He began with Donald and added Joseph, or whatever the fuck his middle name is, as if anyone cares. Then he moved on to Jessica, and then to Tandy. And then, rather surprisingly, he added, Please don't hit me with your mighty cock, Vice President Mike Pence. Because, somehow, over the years, his middle name has become, Please don't hit me with your mighty cock, Vice President Mike Pence. I think it was a practical joke played on him by the family. Either way, the irony was... Delicious. But I digress. What we need is nuance. So a Republican can stop needing to shout so loudly about how he hates Democrats and maybe work with them. So a Democrat can stop feeling so justified in their hatred towards anyone who could possibly support Donald Trump as a breather of oxygen. Donald Trump's idea of nuance would be like me saying that Trump had to go down his hole, I mean his bunker, in that hole. Donald Trump's bunker is far down inside Trump's hole, where Vice President Mike Pence likes to go because, well, seriously? I mean, I've got this whole bit, well, pardon the pun, whole bit, I was going to add an entire third act in which Vice President Mike Pence from the great state of Indiana bent that whiny little bitch Donald J. I'm an asshole Trump over the railing on the roof of the White House, unfurled that mighty cock, and forced our national disgrace to take it sideways. <laughs> but you get it. I think I've shown the importance of nuance in modern politics. You get it. Washington, D.C. has its hands in all our homes. It's actually more than hands. Welcome to D.C. Home. Until next time, be good to yourself, be kind to others, and let's make this world a better place. This is Ken LaSalle, and I just wanted to thank you for stopping by for this episode of DC Home. For more information about myself and the work I do, I invite you to take a look at my website at kenlasalle.com. You can also find me on Amazon, Audible, iTunes, and anywhere you find ebooks, paperback books, and audiobooks online. That's also where you'd find DC Home Season 1. 
available in ebook and in audio. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube by searching my name, Ken LaSalle. And thank you, as always, for your support.